incomprehensible, and shrouded in mystery. We were able to begin exploring beyond our home planet as a result of our insatiable desire for knowledge and the advancement of technology. This caught the interest of scientists even further, and soon new space explorers left Earth to travel to various parts of our solar system to see what wonders lay in the vastness of the cosmos. On April 15, 2021, the spacecraft known as Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 were the first to pass the threshold of 50 astronomical units distant from the Sun. Since none of these space travelers are anticipated to pass the mark a second time, it is quite unlikely that any of them will return to Earth in the foreseeable future. It was on the 19th of January in 2006 that the New Horizons spacecraft got its mission underway. It arrived at Earth after traveling 52 astronomical units at a speed of 14 kilometers per second, which is equivalent to three astronomical units each year. The major aim, similar to those of other interplanetary space probes, has been successfully completed in operational condition for the Pluto and Charon mission. The New Horizons spacecraft, on the other hand, completed a gravity assist maneuver close to Jupiter before departing for its destination. This not only significantly increased the spacecraft's speed, but it also enabled it to acquire high-quality images of the planet with the most satellites in the solar system, which is also the largest planet in the system. After the gravitational boost had been successfully completed, the probe continued on its journey toward Pluto's primary target, which it eventually accomplished in January of 2015. The major purpose of the mission was to take photographs and create detailed maps of the terrains of Pluto and Charon from a range of perspectives. In addition to collecting information on their atmospheres and the features of their surface reflections, the probe also assessed the values of the magnetic field surrounding the objects, as well as the activity of the solar wind. It goes without saying that the mission also involved enhancing measurements of Pluto's orbital characteristics and hunting for Pluto's satellites that have not yet been discovered. Both Kawa R1 and Derekhoff were found, thanks to the cameras on the probe, which continued on past Pluto's orbit after the original mission had been completed. It was determined how far away the star is from both Proxima Centauri and Wolf 359. New Horizons is expected to continue its journey beyond the solar system until it reaches a distance from the Sun of 100 astronomical units in 2038, at which point it will no longer be able to operate its power source. The radioisotope generator on board the spacecraft is expected to start running low in 2026 and eventually shut down one by one. This will cause New Horizons to continue its journey beyond the solar system. The issue was present for both Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11. Therefore, they were both affected. The Pioneer spacecraft got its start on its mission on March 3, 1972. They were traveling at a pace of around 12 kilometers per second, which equated to approximately 2.5 astronomical units per year. Their distance from Earth was 127 astronomical units. When they encountered their escape route, they were already outside the solar system's boundaries. The major purpose, although it has been successfully developed, is not yet in a condition where it can function at this time. After traveling through space for a total of 641 days, the spacecraft arrived in Jupiter's system on December 4, 1973. At this point, images of Jupiter's surface and its largest satellites were beamed back to Earth, along with measurements of Jupiter's atmospheric composition and magnetic field. All of these observations were made after the spacecraft had traveled through space for a total of 641 days. In addition to this, it was found that Jupiter gives out thermal energy at a rate that is 2.5 times higher than the amount it takes in from the Sun. We now have a better understanding of the features of the gas giants and the satellites that they deploy as a result of the data that was gathered back then. Even though it was on its route to Saturn, the second gas giant in our solar system, the Pioneer 11 spacecraft's primary mission was to investigate Jupiter's moons. Its scientific instruments assessed the magnetic field of the planet, and the onboard cameras recorded a lot of photographs of the gas giant, its rings, and its two satellites, Titan and Mimos. Both Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 continued their trip toward the Sun. However, 
The final signal received from Pioneer 10 was in the year 2003, while the last signal received from Pioneer 11 was in the year 1995. The Pioneer spacecraft were sent into space considerably earlier, on September 5, 1977, at a distance of 154 astronomical units from the Earth. They are currently moving at a speed of around 17 kilometers per second, which is equivalent to 3.6 astronomical units per year. It is believed that both are currently racing past the limits of the solar system, and there is no chance that they will ever catch up with either of the two probes. The principal focus of this endeavor is Jupiter and Saturn have successfully completed their missions, although they are not yet functioning to their full potential. The exploration of the solar system has been greatly aided by the cameras aboard the Voyager 1 spacecraft. Among the many achievements of this mission, are the finding of a significant number of additional Jupiter satellites and rings, as well as evidence that the large red spot on Jupiter is in fact a gigantic storm. In addition to the many photographs that were taken of Neptune and its satellites, the onboard meters of the spacecraft sent a plethora of data on the interstellar plasma. It has been a significant amount of time since both the heliopause and the Kuiper belt of our solar system were excited by Voyager 1, and the spacecraft is currently speeding through the scattered disk of the solar system on its way to the inner boundary of a hypothetical Oort cloud. This spacecraft is the first one to have traveled that far away from the sun's center than any other spacecraft before it. Scientists were given a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to study the heliopause thanks to the spacecraft Voyager 1, which was able to travel to the region of space known as the heliopause. This region is where charged particles emitted by the star collide with rarefied plasma to form elaborate structures made up of elementary particles and magnetic fields. The heliopause is the point in space where the pressure of the solar wind and the pressure of the interstellar gas are equalized. It is anticipated that Voyager 1 will reach the inner limit of the Oort cloud in around 30,000 years. After that, it will pass by the star Gleiser 445 at a distance of 1.6 light years before vanishing into the endless depths of deep space. When talking about Voyager 1, it is impossible not to include its twin, Voyager 2, which left Earth on August 20th, 1977. This mission was begun by NASA. In addition to Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, Voyager 2 headed for Jupiter so that it might benefit from the planet's exceptionally strong gravity. The photographs that were obtained during this journey have led scientists to the conclusion that Ganymede and Europa both have seas that are located deep underground when they get near Saturn. The temperature and magnetic field of the gas giant were measured with the Voyager 2, which led to the discovery of many more satellites. It should go without saying that the probe managed to capture a number of different photographs of Saturn's surface, as well as its rings. The next planets to be attacked were Uranus and Neptune. In addition, it was found that both Uranus and Neptune had rings that were affected by Neptune's gravitational pull. Hence, the spacecraft had to modify its course and leave the ecliptic plane in order to complete the flyby. Despite this, the probe still had a lot of fascinating things ahead of it, such as gathering important data on interstellar plasma and cosmic wind, determining the distances to stars, and investigating the heliosphere. At this time, the probe is located 128 astronomical units distant from the core of our system, and the gap between them continues to widen at a rate of 15.37 kilometers every second. Voyager 2 will be located at a distance of around 1.7 light years from the star, and there is a possibility that it will fly by Sirius at a distance of 4.3 light years. This likelihood occurs once every 300,000 years. Interplanetary space probes are simply mankind's first cautious steps in exploring the boundless cosmos. Thus, it is important to anticipate what will happen to them in the future. This is because we are still in the early stages of space exploration. There is a chance that they will be destroyed when they come into contact with a celestial body, but there is also a chance that they will be retrieved from interplanetary space by our distant descendants who will have developed interstellar travel technologies to the point where they will be able to do so. Thank you for watching till the end. We're sure you'll love the following video. Click on the video on the screen to continue to be amazed at everything about space travel.